So welcome to Basic Logic. This is the YouTube lecture series number two. Today we're going to be talking about sentential logic, our first formal system that we're going to be exploring over the course of the semester. This is Nick McGinnis, and let's get to it because we have a lot to do. So we're going to be talking about two things. First, I'm going to introduce kind of the syntax of SL. Then I'm going to be talking about more complicated expressions in SL. What is syntax? Good question. Syntax refers to the rules by which we arrange the symbols of a language to create well-formed grammatical sentences. And the syntax of SL, what makes good expressions of SL, is actually really straightforward. It has three components. Uppercase letters, which stand for simple propositions. Logical operators, uh, in this case and, or, if, then, if, and only, if not which represent logical relations between these propositions, and then we have parentheses that help us keep track of everything. The logical operators uh, serve to capture and formalize logical relations commonly found in English sentences. We have and, we have or, if then, if and only if, and not. I'm using the greater than symbol and the equal symbol, which uh, are the closest things to the textbook, uh, to the textbook which this program has, because we don't have the full character set, I apologize. So this is if then, this is if and only if. So, how does this work? Quite simple. We take two propositions, all the leaves are brown and the sky is gray. We can represent them using capital letters, our first component, L and S, so that when we put together L and S, we mean all the leaves are brown and the sky is gray. Now, logical operators, like propositions, can be either true or false. They are going to take their truth value from the truth values of the things they're connecting up, and they always connect two things together, except the negation. The negation kind of flips the truth value. We'll get to that soon. The point is that there are rules which determine the truth values of logical operators, and these rules give the operators their properties. This is what allows them to mimic the logical relations of, the natu of natural language in English. Here are the rules. So here's the rule for P and Q. This is a truth table. What is a truth table? A truth table gives us uh, the rules we have for determining the value of and in any situation, any situation at all. So you'll notice that we have an and connecting P and Q. And P can either be true or false, and Q can either be true or false. So how many combinations of true and false can there be? Well, both sides can be true, or one can be true, the other one false. The first false and the other true, or they can be both false. That's it. There are no other combinations. And the logical operators are always only going to be combining two things. So you'll only ever need to worry about four possible combination types. In the case of and, it's only true when both sides are true. And that's just what we mean by and. We're saying, look, it is the case at P, and it is the case at Q. So it's true when both these things are true, and it's going to be false otherwise. Same thing with P or Q. Here we have all the possibilities, true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false, turning right, true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. These are all the combinations possible. What is the value of or in these combinations? It's true unless both sides are false. Right, so if I say either one or the other, and it turns out neither of them are true, then I've definitely said something false. By convention, we're going to use or to mean inclusive or. Uh, if you want to say, look, one or the other, but not both, as in the waiter's soup or salad, you can't order both, we can say that, and I'm going to show you how shortly. But just remember, for, uh, convention, uh, for conventional kind of pragmatic purposes, we've decided that uh, true, 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 right, that it's going to be an inclusive or that if P is true and Q is true, the or is going to be true. Here we have the if-then. Here's the truth table. Uh, notice it's only false in one case. So here we have the combinations, and the value of if then is going to be true, false, true, true. It's only going to be false when P is true, but Q is false. Why is that? It might seem strange. Um, in particular, why is it true when both sides are false? Well, think about when the assertion if P then Q has been made false. I only lied when I said, let's say I say, well, if I go to my friend's house, we'll play video games. When did I lie? I lied in the case where I do go to my friend's house and we end up not playing video games but doing something else. If I don't go, uh, I didn't lie. If I don't go, I didn't lie. I only said that if I go, that's what we're going to do. So there's only one clear falsifying situation, right? The situation where I go to my friend's house and we don't play video games, we end up doing something stupid and dangerous like playing with matches and gasoline. Then I would have lied to my mom or whoever. 
uh, but otherwise I didn't lie so there's only one falsifying condition so it's only false when P is true when I say if P then the consequence of that it will be Q well then I do P and Q doesn't follow then I said something false here's the if and only if truth table we're not going to spend much time on this it's kind of a technical notion um, you'll see that it's, it serves actually a really useful purpose in a logical system um, but it doesn't really capture anything we say in English very often so we're just going to kind of go over that one let's look at the negation All right, we'll, we'll go back to if and only if the negation um, doesn't connect two things it flips the value of one thing so if you say not P well if P is true then my saying not P is going to be false if P is false, then my saying not P is going to be the case. Well, let's say P stands for I have a million dollars in my pockets. Well, unfortunately, I don't have a million dollars in my pockets, so not P is going to be true. It is not the case that I have a million dollars. Uh, here, we have a uh, negation operating on another logical connective. Now, that's interesting, uh, because logical operators can act on other logical operators. So here we have the usual, just here we have the usual P and Q with its usual truth table, which we just see, true, which we just saw, true, false, false, false. If I put the not here in front of the parenthesis, what I'm doing is I'm flipping the value of the and. So we're going to input the values of the and to the negation, and the negations, what it's going to do is it's going to flip them. That's what its job is. So it goes tr true, and it flips them to false, false flips it to true, false flips it to true, and finally false flips it to true again. So what I'm saying is the opposite of P and Q. So if I say both P and Q are true, then this is the truth table. And I say it is not the case that both P and Q are true. That's good. going to be the truth table. Notice it's only false in one case. I'm saying, look, it's not the case that both P and Q are true. When is that statement a lie? When both P and Q are in fact true. But I just said they weren't. So that's when it's false. So the connectives, as we've seen, except for the negation, always connect two chunks together. Uh, what are the parentheses for? They're to make it clear what is being connected or modified. So if I write P and Q or R, this is not going to be a valid sentence of SL. It violates the rules of the grammar. That's because it doesn't distinguish between two very different meanings. P and Q is true, or R is true, which is different from saying, oh, P is true, and either Q or R is true. Right? We're saying different, quite different things here. And in SL, this is how we're going to represent that. Sentence 1 star is sentence 1 in SL. So we go P and Q. So P and Q is true, or R. So it's either this, either this chunk here or this R here. Sentence 2, P and either Q or R. So in this case, definitely P and either Q or R. Q or R. So we're saying quite different things here. And our parentheses let us, let us disambiguate the two cases. So every well-formed or grammatical sentence of SL is going to have what we're going to call a main logical operator. And the problem with P and Q or R was that it, it didn't have a main logical operator. Without it, it just wasn't clear whether the sentence was primarily about the and or whether it was primarily about the or. So in sentence one, the main logical operator is the or, because we're saying, look, either P and Q or R. In sentence two, the main logical operator is the and, we're saying both P and either Q or R. Negations can be main logical operators. In sentence three, the main logical operator is the and. I'm saying it is the case, it's both the case that not P and it is the case that Q. Here, I'm saying the main logical op operator is the not, and I'm saying it is not the case that both P and Q. Here you can see the truth tables, and we see they're different. One is saying, it's the case that not P, and it's the case that Q. And the truth table reflects that. Right? One is it true when P is false and Q is true. Here we have, uh, it is not the case that both P and Q are true, so we have a different truth table. So let's look at more complicated expressions, things we can say in SL. So part of the power of SL comes from the fact that you can connect expressions a bit like Lego. So long as you follow some rules, there's really no limit on the size or complexity of the expressions you can create. So our, our, our OR operator, the disjunction, is an inclusive operator, as we just saw. That is, uh, it's true when both things it connects, its disjuncts are true. 
but we can easily express exclusive or, uh, the soup or salad or, a truth table where the expression is true when one or the other of the options are true, but false when both are true. How do we say that? Quite easily. We create an expression where the main logical operator is an AND, and we say, look, either P or Q, the inclusive or AND, we had this extra condition, so it's either one or the other, and it can't be both. It, it is not the case that both P and Q. And indeed, we get the truth table we wanted to see here. False, true, true, false. So what happens when both are true? True, 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 true. Well, it turns out that we have an AND here, and the AND is very skittish. It sees a false here, and it decides to go false itself. And that's exactly what we wanted to see. So that's how we can say exclusive or in sentential logic using this more complicated expression which so the and the main logical operator is taking its value from the next one in line here the or and the not and of course the or is taking its values from the p and the q the not is taking its value from the and and the and is taking its value from p and q so we just have to break it down step by step but it's all kind of automatic um, if you're careful you can't be wrong so the versatility of sentential logic allows us to be really kind of precise. Let's look at the conditional, the if-then. Notice there's a difference between the following two sentences. If I win the lotto, I'll be rich. Only if I win the lotto, I'll be rich. So five is saying that one consequence of winning the lottery is that you're going to be rich. But six is saying something different and a bit more pessimistic. It's saying that the only way I could ever become rich is by winning the lotto. And how do we symbolize this? Well, in the first case, we say, look, if lotto, then consequence, rich. And that's easy enough, right? If I win the lotto, the consequence of that will be being rich. A bit trickier is number six. I'm saying the only way I could ever be rich is by winning the lotto. And how, how do I do this? I just reverse the order. I say, look, if I'm rich, it's because I won the lotto. If I say the only way I can win the lotto, uh, is the only way I could be rich if I win the lotto, then if you see me and I'm rich, then it's, you can safely deduce, well, it's probably because he won the lotto. So we just reverse them, and that's how we say only if. By, it's a necessary condition, as opposed to regular, a consequence of condition. So here's a slightly more difficult case involving the conditional. How do we capture the meaning of unless conditions, such as the plants will die unless you water them? What we're saying is that you must water the plants, or they'll certainly die. So one way to think about it is saying, look, a consequence of not watering is plants dying. So if you don't water, then die. Right? The plants will die unless you water them. Not water, then die. Uh, another way to put it might be, if the plants don't die, if they're not dead, they must have been watered. So if not dead, then watered. That's also an equivalent translation. Brings me to my next point. There are synonyms in sentential logic. What's a synonym? It's an exp a synonym is an expression with the same truth table. Now, 8 and 9 are synonyms. 8 says not P is true and not Q is true. 9 says it's not the case that either P or Q is true, and their truth tables are indeed identical. 10 and 11 are also synonyms. 10 says, look, either not P or not Q. And 11 says, well, not both P and Q. Once again, their truth tables are identical. So here we have our first example, neither P nor Q, and not P and not Q. And we see how their truth tables are identical. So either P or Q, we have the usual truth table for the or, the one we just saw, true, 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 false. And the negation takes the value of that or and flips them, false, 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 true. Here we have not P and not Q. So in what order do we do this one in? Well, the and is going to take in the values of what it connects, and what it's connecting is not p and not q. So we have to figure out what the value of not p is. So we have the usual combinations, true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. We flip those, false, false, true, true, false, true, false, true, and then we take those into the and. So false, 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 true, false, true, false, false. Oh, finally, true, 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 perfect. And as we see, false, 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 true, false, 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 true, identical truth tables. Now feel free to hit pause and see if you can fill in the truth values for these two expressions here. So I gave you the answers already. It should look like false, true, true, true. Um, but just kind of fill in the blanks and see if you can do that. So pause. I'll wait. 
Good. I'm glad you did that. You probably didn't, but it's okay. So here are the answers. You can pause again and just compare against yours if you like. And next video, we're going to start something more complicated, translating sentential logic to English proper. Thanks for listening.